Hey everybody, I'm Chris. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're going to be making the gun blade from Final Fantasy VIII. So for today's prop, as always, we go ahead and we first find the model online. I went ahead, I went to Thingiverse, and I found this one. Uh, this actually caught my attention in particular because it actually includes the full assembled model, which will be very useful for later. So with this prop, I wanted to do something kind of special, and that I wanted to print in one piece on my new Creality belt printer. Now, because this actually, this model was sliced up a little weird, in that it was completely made for normal printing, and then it was actually pre-assembled as an assembled file, and you can kind of see evidence. It's a little hard to tell, but in the assembled model, there's a line here, and further on down, just down the blade, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see like tiny little bits on the blade where it's kind of sparkling a bit. And that's actually where the modeler just took the already sliced uh, parts and put them side by side. And so if we go into our layer view and we look at the underside, you can see actually these hollowed out bits where he's got it to where I guess um, it's just hollowed out, that way you don't have to print a full blade. And then here in the middle of say like these two hollowed out bits, if I was to move the layers uh, somewhere in there. Uh oh, can't find it, hold on. Okay, so if you look right here, kind of at the base of this, how this all looks more or less solid, but you can kind of see a line just before the Griever symbol. If we go into our layer view, and then we just move it up, in fact, you can kind of see it right here. When you move up through the layer view, you'll also notice, see it right here where it's trying to build. And then you've got like this weird little, just kind of lined mark. Uh, that's where the file was completely sliced and separated and everything and then kind of put back together just I guess for references purposes. Um, this is still good and it's still useful but it will be something to kind of note as you print if you decide to go this route and print on a belt printer is because there are in fact two models here just kind of laying side by side the printer sees that and so it will definitely stop here to make a wall of sorts and then continue on with the next model as opposed to it being one seamless thing. So when you print it out and you see a line right here, that's why. So just something else to keep in mind for you to fill in later. Now one kind of like really, really cool thing that I enjoy about this belt printer is while yes, I could technically if I wanted to take this and like say flip it on its edge or something like that, that way the whole thing is printed at once. I didn't want to do that, in fact I wanted to avoid support as much as possible. And so if you go into the layer view, you can actually see how this thing is being printed. And one thing I really enjoy is since it's actually being printed out of 45, in this case I don't need any supports. For example, there's a part right here where it's printing out the individual bullets. Now normally with something like this what you would have to do is go in and add just a little bit of support. That way the, uh, the edge, the cone of the bullet at the very end is um, fully supported and that way it's not printing in thin air, kind of like how it looks here. But remember, since this is at a 45, technically this is a fairly flat surface for the nozzle and so you don't actually need any kind of um, support and so you can get these insane overhangs right here and not actually have any kind of issue at all, which I thoroughly enjoy. But. I'm sure something that some of you guys might have noticed is this is already sliced and it's coming at a three day print. And the reason for that is simple. I want to print the whole thing at once. So since this is a belt print, uh, basically what will happen is it will start all the way back here and it will start by printing the butt of this first. Then slowly come down, come all the way down to the edge of the, uh, the blade and then as that drops off the bed, it'll immediately start and print this other half. And then that just simply leaves me to pick up the two pieces, line them up, and glue them together. And that will look something like this.
So <laughs> first off, here is the fully finished uh, blade. I did decide not to add the uh, griever pendant on the chain. Um, it was just kind of one of those last minute things. I am going to add it later. Uh, basically the idea is I've seen a couple of videos where people have used their CR30 to print out chains. And so I eventually, I want to figure that out and then I want to see how much chain one full spool is. And then after that, I'm just going to cut a piece off and put it on here and then add the pendant, which I've already got my own. Thanks very much, Amazon. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, so basically after I was done printing this, um, then came welding it together and just kind of fixing everything. So first thing is the CR30, it sits about like the bed rather is about an inch or two off of the table. And so as your print comes off, it's gonna droop just a little bit. And where I was sitting mine, it was actually drooping off of the table and just kind of hanging in free, like in just the air in free space, which technically isn't a problem, it's not bad. The, the bed adhesion held it on great. It's not like it was at risk of falling off. But the issue was, this is all plastic. And so it's basically being held like this, and you can already see just a little bit of bow. Well, imagine only half a blade here. So it was warped pretty bad. And so basically what I did is I just took a, uh, a, hot, a hot air gun, and after I clamped the two pieces together, I would just slowly take the gun and just kind of more or less like brush it across to more, sort of evenly heat up the whole thing that we could kind of flex it in place. And you can kind of tell, yeah, right there, I heated it up too much. And those empty spaces that you saw in the preview, I'm pretty sure one's right here. So it kind of caved in a little bit and there wasn't too much I could do to save it. But there are other areas if you focus right there-ish, uh, that's where that line was in the model. And I don't know, I like to think I kind of hit it pretty well. It's kind of noticeable, especially if you point it out. But uh, I mean, especially from far away, like there's nothing wrong with it. It looks fine. It looks like a badass gun blade, which was kind of the point of me making this. Um, it is not in any way functional. The trigger doesn't move, the hammer doesn't move back. I'm sure if you were to print everything in individual pieces that the chamber would rotate and you might even be able to slip in and out the uh, shells and bullets. But because of the way that this was all printed just in one solid go, all of these pieces are fused together so I have no way of rotating this, I have no way of disassembling it in any way. This is all just one solid firm prop. Um, so after I was done printing, I went ahead and I fixed the warp, slapped the two pieces together. I put some glue in between to kind of just help hold everything in place. While I did use super glue, I only used a little bit and I put it more towards the middle. That way none would get towards the edge. Then I went in with my 3d printing pen and I filled in the seam. Then I followed that up with a soldering iron, just kind of more or less mush everything flat. And then the old 3D printing adage of prime sand, prime sand, prime sand. I did, I think three layers of primer before I was more or less satisfied with the way that everything turned out. Um, and then on the model, this is slightly recessed. And so it was really easy for me to go in with a brush and just fill this in with black paint. Um, with some of the thinner lines that my brush was just a little too thick for, I actually took a toothpick and I just dipped it in paint and just kind of drew it on there. I, thinking back on it, I probably just should have used like a fine tip Sharpie, but hey, it worked. But yeah, so I'd like to think that uh, this prop came out pretty well. It's uh, a decent length. I'm 6'3", and this I believe is Reality said it was 1.2 meters, whatever that comes out to in Freedom Units. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Matt Harl. Um, he's actually the one who 
said he was gonna make one of these and it was such a cool idea it absolutely inspired me to make my own so bro huge shout out to you for just kind of getting me back off my butt and back into 3d printing because this is an insanely awesome prop I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy 8 always have been always will be and so to actually have my own gun blade is it, it's my own little achievement pride and joy uh, <laughs> so thanks very much man and also I want to say a quick shout out thanks to my patrons over on patreon for uh, just supporting the channel um, you don't get anything special for it it's just kind of your way of saying hey I like what you do and I want to support you financially and so of course I want to give a shout out. Uh, I did recently disable my Patreon because I wasn't making any videos and so it didn't feel right charging people money without putting out anything or without giving anything back. However, it has now been re-enabled and so uh, I know almost all my patrons backed out except for my buddy Miguel, which hey, love you bro. But um, yeah, if you want to see more props like this, if you want to kind of help me financially out with, you know, getting more filament, that way I can make more, you know, cool 3D prints like this, just go ahead and hit up. The link is in the description. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.